kwenye kaunti ya Busia. Mkutano huu ambao unaendelea kwenye kaunti ya Busia uh, umeandaliwa na azimio la umoja kwa azma ya kupinga serikali. Tuvuke huko moja kwa moja ambapo sasa hivi Martha Karua anazungumza tupate kusikiza anayoyasema. Kikalia, gharama ya maisha itarudi wapi? Mulijua watoto wenu watasoma bila malipo. Baba alikuwa amesema kutoka Januari mwaka huu hakuna mambo ya fees. Tulikuwa tumekagua bajeti ya Kenya na tukaona ya kwamba iko pesa ya na mtazamaji samahani kwa itilafu kidogo ya mitambo takuwa tunapata picha safi na kisha kukuletea taarifa hiyo ndani ya muda usio kuwa mrefu lakini vile vile rais William Ruto yuko na kuru ambako aliandaa ibada ya Jumapili iliyohusisha viongozi wa makanisa mbalimbali mbali, katika kaunti ya Nakuru rais Ruto aliandamana na viongozi mbalimbali mbali kutoka serikali pamoja na usimamizi wa kaunti hiyo ya Nakuru hebu tusikilize kauli yake ya hapo awali alipotoa hotuba yake kwenye kaunti ya Nakuru na wale jamaa wanne ambao tunasoma kwa Biblia Kings 2 Kings 7 and 4 hawa watu ambao walikuwa na ugonjwa wa ukoma walikuwa hapo kwa gate ya Syria na hapo kwa gate wakaanza kujiuliza hapa tukikaa kuna njaa tutakufa na njaa tukiingia hii e, city tutauawa na askari wa kule ndani sasa wakaona tukienda kuuawa na askari tutakuwa tumekufa tukikaa hapa tuuliwe na njaa tutakuwa tumekufa so wacha tu tufanye ile inawezekana hapo ndio uhuru kenyata na mimi tulikuwa kwa sababu upande moja Tulikuwa tumeshtakiwa kule hege na ukora na uongo karibu tunafungwa. Huku nyumbani tunaambiwa na wasungu ya na wao walikuwa na deep state na system ya siku hiyo. Sasa tukasema tukikaa hapa tutashindwa pengine tutafungwa. Tukienda huko pengine tutafungwa. Tukasema waacha liwe liwalo tutafanya ile inawezekana na Mungu akatuonekania na ndio nasimama hapa vile paulo alisema the way i am whoever i am it is by the grace of god ni kwa sababu ya mungu na ndio tulianza hapa safari hiyo ya kuunganisha taifa letu na mungu akatupatia ushindi kusema ukweli sisi hatukukuwa watu wa kushinda kura 2013. Mimi na Uhuru Kenyatta tulikuwa na shida mingi. Tulikuwa na kesi ya Hague, tulikuwa tumefukuzwa serikalini, jamii zetu zilikuwa nagombana, wale walikuwa tunashindana na wao, mmoja alikuwa prime minister, mwingine alikuwa vice president. Wazungu walikuwa wanasema hatufai. Sisi hatukukuwa ni watu wa kushinda. Lakini kwa sababu kuna Mungu aliye hai, tulishinda uchaguzi. Tukarudi hapa tena 2017. Na tukawaahidi ya kwamba Mungu akitupatia ushindi tutarudi hapa kusema ama kutoa shukrani. Lakini bahati mbaya hatukurudi hapa kwa sababu ya mambo mengi. Tulienda tukapata salamu zingine zikatuletea matatizo makubwa zikatuchanganya mpaka mambo ya maombi haikupatikana nafasi lakini Mungu ni nani leo tumerudi hapa na kuru kutimiza ahadi yetu na ndio wakati nilikutana na viongozi wa chama ya jubilii chama yetu ya zamani niliwaambia musikose tuwe pamoja pale na kuru kwa sababu hii maombi ilikuwa ya chama yetu ya jubilii lakini kwa sababu jubilii ilipatikana na ajali
lakini nawashukuru sana viongozi wa jubilee nasikia chairman wa jubilee yuko hapa bwana zuya yuko hapo asante sana na ma vice chairman na wale wengine wote tumekuja hapa mbali na kutoa shukrani zetu kwa sababu tulikuwa hapa na kuru tukaomba kura zenu pale eh, mwaka uliopita mkatupatia kura zenu so hii ibada ya shukurani ni ibada ya kutoa shukurani mara mbili tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ushindi wa 2017 kama jubilee na tunashukuru Mungu kwa ushindi wa 2022 kama Kenya kwanza tunasema asante sana na watu wanakuru waacha nisimame mbele yenu jameni niwaambie asante nasema asante watu wanakuru tulikuwa hapa nakuru mambo yalikuwa magumu lakini nyinyi mkatuamini mkatupatia kura zenu na Mungu akatupatia ushindi nimekuja hapa kwa niaba ya sote tuliopata nafasi ya uongozi kama MCA wale wale chukule kama wabunge maseneta magavana na mimi na huyu rigiji mimi nataka niwaambie watu wanakuru asante sana Narudia watu wanakuru jameni asante sana. Na kwa sababu mumetuamini mkatupatia kura zenu. Mimi nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba tutawafanyia kazi na bidii na tutaomba Mungu atusaidie ndio tuweze kutimiza yale yote tulikubaliana na nyinyi kama mipango ya kupeleka taifa letu mbele. Na kwingineko mwakilishi wa wanawake kaunti ya Kirinyaga Njeri Maina amesisitiza kufanywa kwa uchunguzi wa haraka na kukamatwa kwa wanachama wa nyumba kumi wanodaiwa kuwavamia na kuwaua vijana wawili katika mpaka wa kaunti ya Kirinyaga na Embu. Akizungumza baada ya kugawa misaada ya chakula, mwakilishi huyo aidha ametaka idara ya usalama kuimarisha usalama na kuhakikisha haki inatendeka. Kiamanye kile watu wa Kirinyaga wako na huzuni sana manake kuna vijana wetu wawili waliuliwa na watu ambao wanajifanya ni nyumba kumi. na wale watu ni watu ambao wametoka mpaka wa Embu na mimi nataka niseme ya kwamba kama kiongozi wa hapa Kirinyaga County na kama member wa Justice and Legal Affairs Committee ambayo President William Ruto alisema atanipa manake mlituma mtu amesoma hapa Kirinyaga Niseme tutahakikisha ya kwamba haki imepatikana hadi tujue nani walifanya kile kitendo na nani walikandamiza vijana wetu. Manake sio haki mtu kuchukua sheria mikononi na kutenda kitendo cha unyama. Na wale watu wanajulikana manake kama ni nyumba kumi, chief lazima anajua nani wanazunguka, kama ni sub chief anajua nani wanazunguka, nani walikuwa wakifanya rounds hiyo siku. Kwa hivyo tunataka serikali na all investigative organizations na institutions wafanye utafiti wa haraka ili vijana wetu waweze kupata haki. Na hali mbaya ya kiangazi sasa imewalazimu wakazi wa kaunti ya Wajia kugura maeneo mengine kutafuta maji na lishe kwa mifugo wao. Hali hii imewalazimu wafugaji kutoka maeneo ya Mandera na Wajia kuhama hadi kaunti ya Tana River ili kuepuka kuangamia kwa mifugo wao kwa ukosefu wa lishe. Kuanga, kulingana na Farida Hassan mmoja wa wafugaji waliohamia kijiji cha Sala baadhi ya mifugo wao walikufa njiani wakiomba msaada kwa serikali kukabiliana na hali hiyo mwakilishi wadi wa Sala Mahmud Ali Baro amewaomba viongozi waliochaguliwa kaunti ya Wajia kuwasaidia wapiga kura waliowapigia kura na vile vile kuyaomba mashirika yanayotoa msaada kuleta fueni kwa wafugaji hao wanyama kutoka Marsabit wale kutoka Wajia wa kutoka Mandera wanakuja mpaka Garissa kutafuta kutafuta malisho na maji hiyo ilikuwa ajabu wanyama wanafariki vingi sana mbapo haina ile kama mtu akuja na mia moja inabaki kama ishirini, salasini. na bado wanafariki watu wanaleta na magari ukishukusha magari hiyo mifugo 
nikano kumi tano hivi inamuka gombe anakosa manyasi anakufa yote jile kidogo kidogo tulikuja hapa anakufa juu ya gari huma vet hakuna mmoja anasaidia wananchi eh waje wasaidie wananchi waone ile shida iko hapa eh na wengine wanakufa mali yao hata hakuna mbuzi mmoja eh unaona hapa ukienda fichikani utakuta ile m- e, haiwani ambayo yote nakufa jua gari kutoka tukana paka ijara na lamu wachungaji hawawezi kupeleka watoto yao skuli maana ha, ha, mali imemalizika na ile ambayo iko kidogo haina dhamana haiwezi kuuzwa iende soko haiwezi kuchinjwa ukule nyama maziwa kwanza mambo yake tumesahau wale watu ambayo wana dini wa islamu wa kristo lazima tutubu lazima tuache ubaya ile tunafanya na zaidi ya wasichana alfu kumi wakati ya umri wa miaka kumi hadi 15 katika kaunti ya Marsabit wasanufaika na chanjo ya kuwakinga kutokana na maradhi ya vinavyosababishwa na virusi vya HPV katika mpango wa serikali ya kaunti kuwakinga na aina mbalimbali ya saratani kwenye mpango ulioanzishwa na Wizara ya Afya katika hospitali ya Rufaa ya Marsabit waziri wa afya Grace Galmo ametoa hamasisho kwa wazazi na jamii kwa jumla ya kuhusu umuhimu wa kupata chanjo ya HPV kwa wasichana hao aidha wazazi wametakiwa kupuuzilia mbali uvumi kuhusu chanjo hiyo na kwamba tayari inapatikana katika vituo vya afya kaunti ya Marsabit chanjo hiyo iliyotajwa kuwa salama inapeanwa mara mbili katika kipindi cha miezi sita we are uh, looking at uh, sensitization for hpv vaccination uh, this vaccination is meant for ga- uh, girls between the ages of 10 and 15 years uh, as you are aware cervical cancer is uh, leading in terms of uh, death uh, in 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 kenya at 13.3% uh, through the hpv vaccines girls are able to be uh, vaccinated and uh, against the uh, cervical cancer and that is why we are uh, emphasizing that they be vaccinated we are bidding all the stakeholders uh, to put efforts to make sure that we're going to vaccinate as much as possible our girls as was it said uh, 15 to 10 to 15 years uh, the education department the chief the assistant chiefs the county government officials and all the people that are able to chip in to make sure that we uh, because currently we are a bit uh, among the counties which are uh, reporting the lowest uh, we are among the, the, the three lowest counties we want to improve on this na tukiachana na hayo sasa tuzamie hili ambapo shughuli ya kuwapa makazi wakimbizi humu nchini ilianza mwaka 2016 baada ya kambi ya Kakuma kufurika wakimbizi. Wenyeji wa Turkana wanasema hawana tatizo na hilo ila wakimbizi wamekuwa wakipewa kipaumbele na wao wamesahaulika na hata kukosa mahitaji muhimu kama vile maji. Beldin waliaula alizuru kambi ya Kakuma na hii hapa taarifa yake. Kaskazini mwa Kenya, magharibi mwa kaunti ya Turkana, kuna patikana eneo la Kakuma ambalo lina zaidi ya wakimbizi laki mbili na elfu hamsini. Mji wa Kakuma, biashara zimenoga, uchumi wa eneo hili ukiendeshwa sana na wakimbizi ambao wanakaa kambini Kakuma na makazi ya Kalobeyei. Kambi hii ya Kakuma ilianzishwa mwaka moja baada ya vita kuzuka katika nchi ya Sudan lakini sasa limekuwa hifadhi ya wakimbizi kutoka maeneo yanayokumbwa na utovu wa usalama kama Somalia, Kongo DRC, Ethiopia, Burundi, Eritrea, Uganda na hata Rwanda. Baada ya kambi hii kufurika Shirika la wakimbizi UNHCR lilazimika kuwapa makazi eneo la Kalobeyei. Hata kupata ruhusa ya kuingia kambini ila tulipata picha za makazi ya Kalobeyei ambayo wakimbizi hawa hupewa pesa za matumizi ili wajitegemee. Hizi ndizo zilikuwa nyumba za kwanza kujengea wakimbizi kisha eneo hili likazidi kuwa huku wakimbizi zaidi wakipewa makazi. Wakimbizi wengi wakitoka Sudan, Somalia na Kongo. 
ila shughuli ya kuwapa makazi wakimbizi haijakaa sawa na baadhi ya wakazi wa Turkana wakidai kumekuwepo na upendeleo wanasema wakimbizi wana miundo mbinu bora kuwaliko wengi walalamika katika mkutano huu ambapo wakimbizi walikutanishwa na wakazi wa jamii ya Turkana eneo la Kakuma kama kaunti nyingine kaskazini mwa Kenya Turkana pia inakumbwa na kiangazi kikali na mvua imekuwa adimu. Wale wanaotegemea mifugo kama kitega uchumi wanapata tabu kwani maji yamegeuka kuwa dhahabu. Mito imekauka. Mto huu wa Tarachi ndio tegemeo ila ni mchanga tu uliosalia hapa. Hiki ndicho kisima pekee kinachotegemewa. Wakazi wanasema wanapoteza muda mwingi kuchota maji hapa ilhali wenzao kambini wanapata maji safi ya matumizi if revenues are getting enough water why can't we also get enough water because maji yetu yote inatoka kwa hii laga tarachi na unajua the level of water maji yenye iko refugee ni mengi sana kushinda yale sisi bado tunachota maji kwa laga but refugees are tapped water hey, hapa kuna na shida ya maji ichimbua hata mfereji tunashea na umbo maji nguruwe chesea maji pia naye pia ukwenda ukienda upande wa chakula nini watu wana struggle sana kupata chakula ndio unapata hata mtoto mdogo anaingia town akiwa ngali mdogo sana kutafuta tu malalamishi mengine ni ukataji miti wakidai wakimbizi wamekuwa kikata miti kuchoma makaa ya kupika na kuharibu mazingira wakitaka shirika usika kuwapa njia mbadala ya wakimbizi kupika chakula nataka tu kukata miti yote kukata miti yote and since that time let me tell you turkana imekuwa desert and that is why wakati waliona hivyo waka wakasota out to bamba kuni unaona sasa we you are sorting to bamba kuni and yet uja support community kuweka miti mingi wakimbizi pia wanapata changamoto tofauti haswa wale wanaozaa au kuwaua wa Kenya kwa ni watoto wao hukosa utambulisho pigi akifanya ndoa na mkenya ina maanisha kwamba yeye ako ina better opportunity to apply for Kenyan citizenship by first applying for a dependency pass ile ya kuonyesha kwamba anaishi hapa Kenya na ameolewa na ama ameoa mkenya tuko na wanaume na tuko na wanawake most of them have married our women na wamezaa watoto sasa kitu cha ajabu ni kwamba watoto hawa ni wanani Wakazi wa Turkana wanataka wakimbizi wanaoao wa Kenya kupewa kipaumbele ya kupata makazi nchini ili wasipelekwe nchi zingine na kuacha familia zao nyuma. Ule mtu ako na bibi na watoto he should be integrated. Abaki na bibi hapa. Eh washughulike wote they should carry the burden together. Hapa yes. anaenda resettlement ama unaenda <laughs> ama unaenda repatriation ati unawacha bibi na watoto Aidha ajira pia imekuwa tatizo eneo hili. Utapata kwamba hata kama waki advertise kazi, watasema advertising for 100 positions. Alafu 70 positions will be given to refugees and then 30 to the host community. And... Yote tisa wakazi wa Turkana wananufaika pakubwa na uwepo wa kambi hizi. Hatuna shida na mambo ya integration kati ya mandugu zetu huko na wale host In fact we don't call them refugees. We call them brothers. Tunashukuru nchi ya Kenya kwa kuweza kutupea nafasi ya kukaa. Sababu kama tumekimbia hatukua tunajua kwamba tunaenda wapi. Lakini wa Kenya wakaona hapana kulingana na matatizo ambayo mko nayo wacha tuwapee hifadhi. Kando na hayo Kenya sasa ina sheria ya ukimbizi ya mwaka moja inayowapa wakimbizi uhuru wa kutembea nchini kupata kazi na kuendeleza shughuli zao za kawaida. Makazi ya wakimbizi ya Kalobei ambayo ni zaidi ya kari 500 yalianzishwa ili kuwapa wakimbizi uhuru wa kutangamana na wenyeji. Ile wenyeji wanasema kuwa mazungumzo zaidi yanafaa kufanywa katika shughuli ya kuwapa wakimbizi hao makazi ili wakazi wa Turkana pia wanufaike na miradi hiyo. Na juhudi zaidi zimewekwa kuhakikisha wazazi wanaohitaji usaidizi wa karo 
kuwawezesha watoto wao wanaotoka mazingira duni kupata elimu nao ya, ya sekondari inawezekana wanafunzi waliofuzu mtihani wa darasa la nane wa KCPE kwenye eneo bunge la Kitutu Chache North kaunti ya Kisi wamepata msaada utakaofadhili masomo yao ya sekondari kwa mwaka mmoja ili kuwapa nafasi wazazi kwa haramia mahitaji mengine yanayohitajika wakati wa kuanza elimu ya shule ya upili akizungumza kwenye kaunti ndogo ya Marani mbunge wa Kitutu Chache North Jafet Nyakundi alitaja kuwa mikakati kabambe imewekwa kuhakikisha fedha za ufadhili wa elimu eneo hilo zinatumika ifaa na sisi tulisema ya kwamba kwa sababu tumepata mbunge mpya ambaye ndio mimi hapa tumebadilisha ule mtindo wa kupatiana basari basari zilikuwa zinapatiana kwa ofisi lakini mimi niliamua na wananchi hawa wangu wote hapa kwa kadri moja ya kwamba basari tutakuwa tunapatiana hapa mahali wako kwa sababu kulikuwa na udanganyifu kidogo wa maneno ya basari hawa wako wanapata basari vizuri lakini tumesema ya kwamba tutafanya na tutahakikisha ya kwamba basari imepatianwa kwa njia ya haki na njia ya halali na kila mtu ambaye leo ameweka ameleta fomu zake za basari hapa ataweza kupata basari kwa sababu hizi ni pesa ambazo ni zao na ni pesa ambazo ni za serikali tutahakikisha watoto wetu wamesoma wamepita na wameweza kuenda katika ngazi za juu na mtazamo wangu tukisalia kwenye taarifa inayofungamana na masuala ya elimu wanasayansi wa kike nchini wameanza mikakati ama mkakati wa kutengeneza kutengenezea wanafunzi wa kike nchini kufanya vyema katika masomo ya sayansi na kuongeza idadi ya wanawake katika sekta mbalimbali mbali za sayansi wakisherekea siku ya wanasayansi wa kike wanasayansi hao wametoa mbinu inayofaa kufuatwa na wanafunzi hao ili kufanya vyema katika safari yao ya masomo kwa sasa idadi idadi yao ipo katika asilimia thelathini huku akiwa na nia ya kuipandisha hadi asilimia arobaini pursuing automotive diploma in automotive engineering nilipata grade ya C- when in high school na nilikam kufanya hii course because it's a male course but to me it's an advantage ju first of all kwa field uko nje tulienda attachment and we saw like iko na job opportunities mingi for us na si lazima hata uandikwe na mse you can also create your own job out of spares what what with how things are moving on uh, in terms of growth in terms of even uh, exposure you find that uh, right now it's something that very many girls are looking into the reasons why they tend to shy away from it is because they don't get that mentorship they don't get coaching and support and women in technology who are is coming in to be able to bring that up lift them to have that courage that this is not just uh, a male dominated space but it is something that you can also do and i've been able to see and attest that also men are coming in to support the young girls uh, to do some of these courses and it's something that they can be able to foresee that in future it can really uplift their careers na taasisi ya kubuni na kukuza mitalaa imekanusha madai kwamba mtalaa wa sekondari ya ngazi ya chini una masomo mengi zaidi kuliko inavyostahili. Mkurugenzi mkuu Charles Ongondo amesema kinyume na madai hayo masomo yanayofunzwa katika sekondari ya ngazi ya chini hayana tofauti na kwa kivyo vyote na masomo kwenye mifumo ya elimu iliyotangulia ya 4723 na vile vile 844. Wakati huo huo imebainika kwamba kufikia sasa serikali imesambaza za kati ya nakala tatu na saba za vitabu shuleni kwa ajili ya sekondari ya ngazi ya chini. Huku safari ya sekondari ya ngazi ya chini ikiendelea kushika kasi. Serikali imetoa taarifa ya hivi punde kuhusu usambazaji wa vitabu kwa wanafunzi walioko katika shule zote za umma za sekondari ya ngazi ya chini. We have done about six books in 10 counties. By the end of the week we are aiming at having done about uh, 20 counties 
at least a half of the, the learning areas. Serikali inastahili kusambaza jumla ya nakala milioni 17 za vitabu kwa wanafunzi wote wa sekondari ya ngazi ya chini katika shule zote za umma kwa gharama ya shilingi bilioni tatu. Na labda ni kutokana na idadi hiyo kubwa ya vitabu wanavyostahili kwa navyo wanafunza hao ndio inayezua mjadala mkubwa huku wengi wa kidai masomo inayofunzwa kwenye sekondari ya ngazi ya chini ni mengi kuliko inavyostahili. Ila ofisa mkuu mtendaji wa KCD Charles Ongondo anasema masomo inayofunzwa kwenye grade za saba, nane na tisa ni kwa kiwango kinachostahili na kwamba haipo tofauti yote na mifumo ya hapo nyuma. Alipokuwa kizindua msafara wa kusambaza vitabu vya grade ya saba kwa shule za umma, waziri wa elimu Ezekiel Machogo alidokeza kwamba uenda mtaala wa sekondari ya chini ukafanywa mabadiliko kwa kusudi la kuangazia idadi ya masomo. Hata hivyo Profesa Ngonda anasema mfumo na umbo la mtaala na masomo yanayofunzwa utegemea malengo na maadili ya taifa, yani national goals and values. At every stage of learning, you have got to give learners an opportunity to experience that which will address the goals of education. Now the goals are eight. If you start unpacking them, let us just say one. For example, the one that says learners should be able to communicate effectively and respect other people's cultures. Now that is already communication. That already gives you English, already gives you Kiswahili, because that's a, a national language, and already gives you a foreign language. Related to that you can talk about the issue of international consciousness. Katika sekondari ya ngazi ya chini wanafunzi watafunzwa masomo ya lazima na mawili na mengine angalau mawili ya kuchagua. Kumaanisha wanafunzi hao watafunzwa kati ya masomo matatu hadi manne kutegemea chaguo la mwanafunzi. Masomo ya lazima ni kama vile hisabati, Kiingereza, Kiswahili, Kilimo, Sayansi Jumuishi, Elimu ya Afya, Jamii na Dini. Mengine kwenye orodha hiyo ni elimu tangulizi ya ufundi, biashara, study za maisha, michezo na elimu ya viungo vya mwili. Nayo masomo ya kuchaguliwa ni kama vile sanaa ya kuigiza, sayansi ya nyumbani, sayansi ya kompyuta, lugha za kigeni na lugha ya ishara. When you think about learning areas, there are learning areas that are meant to have learners advance as they progress through the education system. But there are learning areas that are meant to help the learners operate today. Okay? So in the junior school, think about life skills. It's only one lesson a week. Now that is extremely critical for the learner today. A lot of these children have not interacted with the people. A lot of these children at that age are experiencing certain features in their bodies for the first time. Shadrach Committee, KT News. Ndazama aje tarifa hiyo ya kesha drug meet na nifikisha tamati ya tarifa za mbio weekend ya la siri ya leo. Nimekuwa kwa hadi ya muasiwa uwe na jio nji. KTN News. Get the whole story. But all along, you know, that we won elections and not just winning, we won resoundingly. So we are very happy and uh, I just now want to appeal to the people of Busia that a lot of time has gone. We are almost uh, half a year since we did elections. You must remember that we did elections on 8th. And so we must decide that uh, it's about time now uh, we really concentrated on service delivery to the people. The journey of tea from farm to factory to cup. KTD has invested uh, around the value tea. Some of the reforms they have done is to ensure that we do a timely collection of the tea. How is tea processed? Types of tea? What determines quality? Why are KTDA teas superior? And why do they fetch best prices? We are paying them about 21 shillings per kilo. We are educating the farmers on how to diversify on tea. KTD is able to source for the best machineries for the factories. We have a kilo of 250 per month. Fresh hope for tea farmers this Sunday at 8.30 p.m. on KTN News.
we celebrate love in all its forms 